All right, welcome everybody. My name is Michael Baxter and I am a 2020 HR UFL here at Unilever. Um, I have the privilege of welcoming everybody to this live event and we're just going to get to chat to you today about how you can discover the power of you at Unilever. I've absolutely loved my experience with it and um, being a part of this program so far and joining me today I have Nitin and Mnoto who themselves have been a part of this Unilever Future Leaders program and are now managers at Unilever. And so I'm going to hand over to them to introduce themselves to you. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, pleasure to sort of e meet you guys or digitally. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining the session today. And uh, my name is Nitin Basesa. I've been um, at Unilever for I think quite some time now, almost seven years. Um, and I'm really excited to be talking to you guys about Unilever and uh, the Future Leaders program, as well as uh, my experience. Uh, but before I get on, a uh, quick introduction from Noto. Yeah, um, good afternoon. Yes, it is afternoon. Good afternoon, guys. So yes, my name is Umnot Somjali, and I grew up in Durban, um, born and bred, and then basically was trying to run away from my mom at the time. So picked the furthest place to study, which was University of Cape Town which is where I spent quite a bit of time and then finally graduated and then joined Unilever. Um, so I've been with Unilever also quite some time now. I think I'm in my 60 or something. Sometimes, yeah, I lose track of time. But currently what I do, uh, I bring joy to over 200 million Africans uh, through foods and refreshments. And if you want to use corporate lingo, I mean, the title would just be the category marketing manager for foods and refreshments. Um, which covers about nine countries, which is going to extend to 13 countries and overlooking about 14 brands. Um, yeah, for the category. So that's me in a nutshell. Cool. So um, I just like to talk to you guys very uh, briefly about Unilever and the organization in which we work in. And uh, I think both of Nota and I have only ever been with Unilever, so we're quite privileged. Um, and we'd love to tell you a bit about our organization, the one we work in. Um, so there's no better way, I think, to describe Unilever um, rather other than to describe our campus. Um, and what a campus is really is, as you can imagine, something that guides us um, and directs our organization. Um, and that's driven by our purpose, which is uh, to make sustainable living commonplace. Unilever was founded um, by Lord Lever many, many years ago, I think over 130 years ago. And he created a soap, which I think we're all very familiar with, sunlight soap. And he created that soap with the purpose of making sustainable living commonplace um, when there was a lot of um, need for this in, in England. So that purpose has been true throughout Unilever's um, history and it's one that we continue to do um, today and into the future. So making sustainable living a commonplace is really important to us. Um, and why and how does this fit in with the three pillars that we have? So it's the first part of it is companies with purpose last. And like I mentioned, Unilever has had this purpose for many, many years and we continue to last and continue to grow year on year um, and show ourselves to be an organization that not only cares about um, themselves and the, and the people that work within the organization, but more importantly, the people that buy our products and the society that we operate in. So that is really important to us. Um, and then people with purpose thrive. Um, and I've, I know I've got a strong sense of purpose and it's people within the organization that have a strong purpose that work on in an organization like Unilever, where no matter your purpose, you will find a, a way to live your purpose at, at Unilever. And that allows you to thrive every day. So I'll speak about it from a very personal point of view. Um, I'm a very people's person. My purpose is um, uh, very, very aligned to Unilever and probably that's why I've been here for so long. Um, and it is all about sustainable living and ensuring that there's equality in society, you know, be it financially, um, environmentally. And I work in a brand like Lifeboy. Um, I'm the Lifeboy brand manager. And for me, I've never th thrived more than what I'm thriving right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic, a hygiene pandemic. And it is very exhausting to work um, on a brand like Lifeboy, where your brand is always uh, under pressure to deliver. But, you know, going back to the purpose of Lifeboy and, and the purpose that I have, I've, I've, I'm thriving in the role and I'm thriving every day. Um, even though uh, we're under pressure, we're thriving. Um, and then brands with purpose grow. So 
This is this is very simple, really. I think uh, purpose is quite common now across brands, um, whether it's within Unilever and outside of Unilever. People will often see that there are brands that have a strong sense of purpose and have a real meaning to what they do. Um, and those are the brands that resonate most with consumers and resonate most with people and end up being the ones that flourish um, in the marketplace and continue to grow from strength to strength. Um, brands such as Lifebuoy, Demistos, um, even Sunlight in South Africa have strong purpose elements and they, they continue to do well in the market because they help consumers um, and environments thrive even better. So that's pretty much Unilever and our, and our campus. Next slide, please. Um, so you need to buy the numbers, and this is one that always sort of um, gets to you when you look at it. I know when I was uh, preparing for the presentation, I was like, whoa, um, it still gets me every day. I think um, you guys probably all know uh, Unilever products. Uh, maybe it's in South Africa, it's uh, Sunlight or even Magnum, Handy Andy, Domestos, Omo. But around the world, we've got 2.5 billion people using a Unilever product each and every day which is quite phenomenal when you think about it, because that's a lot of people. Uh, 2.5 billion people is is um, a hell of a lot and more than the South African population by a good few times. Um, there's over 400 Unilever brands um, in, in across the globe, and that's because we have multiple divisions. We have a home care division, we have a personal care division, and like Imnota mentioned, we have a food and refreshments division. So we have a lot of products um, that cater to different needs and to different um, uh, affordability uh, scales as well. So we are able to stretch our portfolio and offer high end products and also low end products to ensure that everybody is able to to get a Unilever product. Uh, we are present in uh, 190 countries, so that's pretty much most continents in I think other than Antarctica that that we're present in. Uh, we're all over um, and it's a it's a really big uh, company that we get to work in. And I think the really exciting part about this is when you work on a brand like Lifeboy, for example, and I talk about that because I'm living it right now, you get to very quickly tap into what other markets are going through. What are they doing? How are they how are they meeting consumer needs and how can we learn from them and how can you um, share your expertise with other countries? So it's really exciting to work for an organization that is in over 190 countries. Um, and then there's 155,000 uh, Unilever people delivering on, on the company's success. And that's large because it just shows the opportunity at scale uh, within an organization like Unilever. You know, um, there's many companies that are um, growing day by day, but I think Unilever to have 155,000 uh, employees has really shows the commitment to people development, knowing that people uh, are happy at Unilever and continuing to stay. And then 52 billion euros uh, in turnover for 2019. Uh, that's that's a lot of money, um, but obviously that that is only achieved by, like I say, our campus and being able to deliver against our strong purpose. Um, and some of our brands, like I touched on, uh, Lifeway, which is quite a common one here in South Africa, Vaseline, Dove, Tresemme. That's in our beauty and personal care um, division. And those are only some of the brands in our BPC uh, division. And then some of the brands uh, which you may be familiar with in home care, Sunlight, I think Sunlight Green Bar is quite uh, resonant with South Africans, Omo, Handy Andy, Domestos, um, and then moving to foods and refreshments, um, such as your teas and your ice creams and, and your Noor products. So Joko, Ola, Hellman's, which is new to South Africa, but very, very tasty. No, um, and as well as Robertson's. So that's Unilever in a nutshell. It's honestly a fantastic organization to work in. Um, I've been here for for six and a half years, and um, yeah, honest, honestly, really uh, loving it and continuing to go on. <laughs> awesome. Um, so let me just briefly take you through the EFRP journey. Uh, as you can see on the slides, I'm not going to touch on every box, but uh, being a graduate, you actually get put into the EFRP journey. And the three boxes I'm going to touch on is the two to four years, uh, the global exposure, and also the diverse roles and experiences. So the graduate program can take anything from two to four years. I graduated in three and a half years. I seem to like the scenic route. Uh, but some of my other graduates uh, or well, colleagues at the time graduated within three years, some four years, some two and a half years as well. So for me, it was always uh, a journey as well. Uh, and then I've subsequently got promoted after five years. Um, but something I've also learned in this whole journey is that 
everyone is going to be walking their own journey. And for me, I started to get to a point where I was not after the title, I was actually after the experiences, which actually served me very well, uh, which actually got me into my current role because I had a breadth of experiences. Then I can draw from these experiences to actually deliver on my current job versus another colleague who might have been chasing a title uh, and only has a limited amount of experiences in for example, just in brand, for example. Um, so yes, your journey will be two to four years. Um, if we touch on the global exposure slash global networks, um, you will have a chance to either go on a business trip, uh, international assignment, a short term assignment, or even work remotely with teams from the US, uh, from China. I mean, as Nitin mentioned, we have over 190 countries which you can easily tap into. Uh, so for me, for example, one of my markets is Mozambique, so I can easily get on a call, which I actually did about two weeks ago, uh, Mozambique being Portuguese, they have huge Portuguese influence, so I could easily just call a person from Brazil or Portugal to actually understand how do they communicate in Portuguese uh, to the consumers, because Mozambique, uh, Portugal and Brazil have they similar culturally and they speak also the same language. So that's the type of exposure you will get uh, depending on the business needs as well at the time. And then lastly, I'd like to just focus on the diverse roles and experiences. So you're not going to follow the traditional that, for example, if you come into marketing, you must do brand building, brand development, and then go into sales. You're going to have diverse roles. And honestly speaking, your career is actually in your hands. That was the first piece of advice that I was also given is that you need to actually take your career into your own hands and actually develop yourself as well in terms of what you want. So for example, I didn't study engineering. However, I mean, I can actually end up in supply chain because you do learn on the job actually. So I've always had an interest in procurement, uh, especially with my economics background in terms of how do we buy the oils that go into sunlight, for example, we speak hedging there. So it's you can have that experience if you want to go into R&D, depending on your degree, obviously, but you have diverse roles and experiences which you can easily tap into. Uh, this provides an output um, after the two to four years when you graduate, where we want future fit leaders uh, that have in-depth function and that have end-to-end -end business understanding and just generally having a GM mindset. So you need to be very agile and nimble uh, and be able to actually tap into the R&D side, the procurement side, the sales side as well. So for me, something I'd focus on is, for example, end-to-end -end business understanding. So I know a lot of graduates want to be entrepreneurs and Unilever is actually the perfect place to come and learn about business, uh, the entire value chain. So for example, one of the brands I work on is Kno. So if you wanted to know from the farm, the tomato on the farm, all the way how it lands into our packet soup, all the way in terms of how it can actually end up on a shop right shelf, you will learn that uh, entire process and just understand the inputs and the value chain and the systems in place to make it actually end up in your hands, uh, cooking basically in your house. So for me, that's the whole UFRP journey, which has been immense learning. Uh, one of the best uh, grounds just to learn about business um, and just having the GM mindset. So yes, that's it for me for PG any point of view. Okay, well, let me just go on to my journey. I'll, sp I'll speak <laughs> first. So for me, um, how can I start? I'm a person in Zulu, we call it Tandi Zendo, which means you like things. Um, I'm a very curious person. So I've had actually a breadth of experience. Uh, maybe depth might sometimes be missing, but for me, that's what I wanted. I wanted to tap into the different departments. So my first year I started in ice cream, uh, selling happiness. Um, I even remember <laughs> I lost about 2 million Rand. Um, so I mean, it just, it's an example of how Unilever actually also allows you to fail. Uh, as an organization. I did find the 2 million rand, by the way, but um, at the time, obviously, it was stressful. But you just learn in terms of how to manage the having concern for rigor and also bias for action. And that's I learned in my first year. Um, and then in my second year, I wanted African experience because I wanted that experience to be able to tap into different markets as well and understand different cultures. So I was working on savory for East Africa and Central Africa, the main countries being Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. 
and also great experience. I got to travel to Kenya. Um, was, that was my main market. And I even remember one of the projects we worked on was actually relaunching a failed. Uh, we, we tried to launch innovation, which failed. It happens. Um, and then we had to relaunch our old formulation within three months. So for those of you that are in marketing, you can probably relate to the Coke example when Coke actually changed their formulation and it bombed in the market. So those are the type of learnings that you will not really learn maybe in business schools, but it's actually the hands on experience that you will get uh, in Unilever and the different departments you go in. Uh, in my third year, me liking things, I wanted a challenge in terms of going into sales. Um, I went into the personal care department, so I was the skincare lead. Uh, we call it uh, CCD, which is category and channel development. And I was basically working on Dawn lotions, Vaseline, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and also Dove lotions. Also, um, crazy experience. Every day is a new day with new challenges. I know a lot of people say that, but literally every day you don't know what you, you're you going to face. Um, so that was also great experience for me, working with customers, ShopRite, Clicks, uh, your spas as well. So getting that experience and working with diverse range of people from supply chain, R&D, marketing as well. Um, so yeah, and then I was afforded the opportunity to go to London. So I spent a couple of months, about seven months in London, uh, being the global Tresemme digital and e-commerce lead for 32 markets. Um, it's so funny when I think about it, how do you send a black man with no hair to actually go look after Caucasian uh, hair? So it was a very interesting challenge for me to also stretch myself. And as I said, look, we're looking after 32 markets and I was in charge of developing the digital and e-commerce strategy, working with the likes of your Amazon and your Alibaba in terms of how to win in that marketplace. I uh, also learned, launched the thick and full Tresemme range in the US, UK, Canada, um, and some of the Latin markets at the time. And then finally, I returned back to the motherland, um, which is actually my current role. So I came back as a junior category manager, which then subsequently I got promoted in, which is basically what I'm doing now, which is, yeah, foods and refreshments for about nine countries and 14 brands. And that's it. I mean, my journey has just started. It's a crazy journey and I'm looking forward to, yeah, the future. Cool. Uh, thanks, Mnoto, for, for giving me a bit of a break um, and interesting to hear your, your journey. Uh, so I'll go on to mine. Um, yeah, so I started at Unilever um, as a, actually as an intern. That was that was my first experience at Unilever. Um, and that's why I say so it's the first company and I think the only company I've ever worked for. Um, I joined as a in, as an intern um, in my final year of university uh, when I was studying at the University of Cape Town. Um, I did a four month, a four week uh, internship um, on a brand called Radox, uh, ironically, which I'm working on now as well. Um, and then I, I did that internship and then I joined again for a second internship in the latter part of the year. Um, this is my second uh, holidays uh, when I worked on Ola. Um, and after that, I joined the UFLP program uh, when I finished university in 2014. Um, I was on the UFLP program for three years. Um, it was absolutely, I think for me, the best experience I've ever had uh, coming in uh, fresh out of university, not knowing anything about corporate or the working world and how to navigate myself. Um, I was given an opportunity to work uh, in my first year on a brand uh, like Lifeboy. I worked on Lifeboy as an assistant brand manager for a year. That was really good. Uh, got 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 me into the feel of what it's like to be in marketing and also to run a business. Um, and what I'm not to touch on in terms of entrepreneurship is also, you know, you get the opportunity to look at your, your brand and the space you work in as your little business. Um, and you and you drive that every day when you come into work. So uh, a lot of people think that corporate is, you know, this big thing where you, we, you know, you have a boss and you have to report to your boss and do your, your whatever your boss says or whatever. But I think the, the beauty of working at Unilever is you come in and it's your business, it's your um, income and loss statement, if I can make it as simple as that, and say, this is where I am, this is the issues I'm facing, these are the challenges, these are the opportunities. And um, that's basically what we do every day. Um, and I did that for one year on Lifeboy. Um, I then did uh, uh, a role in the East and Southern Africa market. So that's Kenya, Zimbabwe, 
Mozambique, Malawi on on Savory, which was really exciting. That was when I did uh, my first overseas trip with Unilever, which was really, really cool. Uh, we went to Kenya um, and spent a lot of time with consumers um, there in Kenya. Then I did um, six months in customer market, uh, sorry, customer development, which is pretty much uh, in layman's terms, the sales operation side of the thing. So not just, it's also to give us the experience of how does, you know, once you produce this product and once it's in market, what are some of the challenges and opportunities that the sales team face? And living that helps you really become a sharper marketeer. Um, and then uh, similar to Mnota, I also went to the UK for six months where I also worked on e-commerce. So uh, guys, I started uh, before Mnota. So just so you know, he copied me. I didn't copy him. Um, and uh, I also worked on e-commerce in the UK, which was a really a good opportunity. I was also there for six to seven months. Um, that was really insightful because you go from working in a in a culture like South Africa um, into the UK, and it really helps you adjust and develop personally in terms of saying how do I adjust to different cultures. You know, the UK is is uh, the cliche is almost like a cultural melting pot because the global office you've got people from every sort of nationality in the office, and you're learning from them every day, but you're also learning how to deal with them and how to deal with their working styles and their their ways of working, uh, which is really good. And then also trying to deliver as well. Um, I then came back and worked on Omo, which was uh, for me one of my favorite brands to work on. Um, I love Omo a lot. <laughs> Sounds crazy. I didn't think I could ever love washing powder so much. Um, and that was really good as well. Um, I did that for South Africa and for Kenya um, and Nigeria. Then I, I became a brand manager in home care where I looked after Omo. Oh no, sorry. I looked after Sunlight, uh, Domestos for East, West and Southern Africa. Uh, so it was quite a lot to deal with, um, but it was really exciting. I think uh, the highlight for me um, in that role was creating an affordable, high quality toilet cleaning product. Um, and the thing I love about Unilever is you really are challenged to go and find out what the problem is with the consumer and go and fix that problem honestly. And don't don't beat around the bush with your solution. You know, don't come with uh, Domestos in a sachet because actually when you open up a sachet, it's going to burn people's hands because you're not supposed to really get that involved with it. So we actually created the mist of a powder, which was safe on hands and also more effective at, at cleaning the toilet. Um, and it was it was something for me when we spent, I think, about two weeks in Nigeria and two weeks in Kenya um, going house to house and crudely as this is, but cleaning people's toilets with them and understanding how important simple thing like a powerful toilet cleaner can be. Um, and it may not be the most sexiest and most luxurious thing to do, but when you see the smiles on people's faces that an affordable toilet cleaner can do and the security that you're providing their families with, for me, that is more rewarding than working on a brand like Magnum. Sorry to say, I'm not, I know you work on ice cream now, but uh, honestly, it's it's been really good. Um, from then, I, I then um, moved on to the role that I'm in now, which is a senior management role um, working on Lifebuoy and Redox um, yeah, and working on Lifebuoy as well. Um, is, is really been rewarding over these last six months. It's been tiring, but it's been really good. Um, the other day I was working till, till um, on a project till quite late and somebody said to me, why are you still working? You know, you're not saving lives. I said, well, you know, when you wash your hands nowadays uh, and, and generally you can you can actually save lives and, and using sanitizer. So, you know, we, we joke about these things, but the reality is the work we do at Unilever um, has great importance. Uh, we we touch over, over two, two billion people every day with our products. Um, so, you know, we have to make sure our quality is right, our, our marketing is honest and true. Um, and that's been my experience. You know, I could go on and on and on. But um, in a nutshell, I think I've I've changed so much as a human being, um, very honestly at Unilever. Um, I've learned so much more about South Africa and South Africans um, at Unilever than I ever thought I would ever understand. I, I thought I knew South Africa. I thought I knew South Africans and how we are and how we interact. But um, the amount of time I've spent with consumers and people in South Africa, not even call them consumers, just South Africans. Um, I've spent two two days in Amtata waking up and going to understand how people get ready in the morning and how children go to school. And that is an opportunity that I would have never had if I had not joined Unilever. And it's grown me so much as a person. I think my leadership skills as well have grown quite a bit. And just understanding how business works, you know. Um, we have a family business as a family, but I think I've I've never learned as much about running a business um, as much as I've learned about Unilever. And finally, the last thing I'd love to say about Unilever is you, you never stop learning and you never stop growing. 
So there's no ceiling um, and you're always learning more and more every day. So uh, Imnota and I have learned a bit about e-commerce, but I can guarantee you there's tons more we can learn. We've learned a little bit about managing ice cream, but there's more we can learn um, and so on and so forth. So there's always more to learn and Unilever is always investing in us to learn more and push us further. Um, and you never know enough because Unilever is always growing. So it's it's always a challenge to come into work every day and personally and professionally, it's yeah, it's been a really, really strong experience. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. It has been such a pleasure to have you guys join me today. Um, and thank you to all of you guys that have joined us in on the session and thanks for listening in. I've seen a lot of questions coming through about the UFLP program and about our internship programs. Please guys, feel free to jump into our Sagia Career Fair booth. Come chat to us. We are live. Just search for Unilever under any of the pavilions under the N to Z booth. Um, be sure to come check us out and we can answer all of your questions 